Hello my friends and welcome to Tom's Tankering and Adventures. Today we are going to be changing a clutch on a Honda CBR 1100XX Blackbird. At one time this was the fastest production bike in the world. And uh, this is my friend's motorcycle. I almost bought it, but I had one too many bikes in the garage at the time. And I give it to him and I've been jealous ever since. But we're gonna be changing the clutch on this today. So um, I will start walking you through the steps. The majority of bikes got the clutch on the right hand side. Um, on this one, it's under the, this cover. So we gotta take the side cover off and we're also going to be draining the oil out. Um, I think I might have shown on one video, maybe possibly, a way that you can uh, sneak that by if you want to lean the motorcycle heavily over to the left. I'll do that on dirt bikes. I generally won't do that on a street bike. But uh, we're just going to drain the oil. We'll get this lower fairing off and I'll show you this clutch cover. Well, I don't know what was up with either one of us because uh, we're usually not ones to plan, but uh, for some reason we've planned ahead and got a new clutch cover gasket. Uh, usually we wait until we're into the job and then the, the gasket gets destroyed and then we're cursing and uh, making a new gasket out of a Path Blue Ribbon beer box or uh, possibly just trying to RTV it. But anyway, we bought a new gasket. So here's the pro tip. If you have the new gasket, trace around the gasket and you have a template, and then I marked where all the bolt holes are, and I marked the direction up and forward. And then when we take the bolts out of the clutch cover, I'm gonna take my little Phillips screwdriver and poke holes in each one of these bolt holes. And you just put the bolts right in there. And then you don't have to just draw this freehand because you have the gasket as a template. So there's your pro tip for the day. That is if you plan ahead. And like I said, I don't know what the hell we were thinking because that's not the way that we usually operate. All right, so the little uh, Ryobi impact works pretty good for taking this off. And we're using our template, nice and easy. Oil's already draining. You really probably only, well, yeah, you probably only had to drain about half a quart on this bike, especially if we had it on the side stand. But when we take this cover off, there's still gonna be some oil coming out of here. So, I stuck a little piece of cardboard underneath here, but we'll probably grab a rag before we pop this cover all the way off. There we go, it's just that easy. All of the bolts are off. And now, let's see if we can't just pull it off. It's never quite that easy. Sometimes it is. This uh, cover might not have ever been off, so we'll see. Yeah, sometimes it takes a little bit of a uh, persuasion with a hammer rubber mallet let me grab one uh-oh i would not recommend the, the screwdriver there <laughs> that's how you always do it yeah <laughs> There we go. Oh, the gasket's still good. We don't have to put a new one on there. I would say no. The gasket's not good. We left half of it on there. Yeah, perfect. And half of it on here. <laughs> so this is the biggest pain in the butt. Now I was going to be cleaning up that gasket material. But anyway, our clutch is underneath here. So what we need to do next, yep, look inside of here, make sure everything is legit. It looks pretty clean. Beautiful. Yeah, 78 miles. <laughs> <laughs> so next we're gonna pull off these springs. That's a 10 millimeter. So we'll get that set up and we'll be right back. Make it easier. I don't want to get Justin. Look at that. This is a professional here. What I always recommend is to put these right in the direction they came off. Now, if you noticed, this one came off in a different fashion than the other ones. I don't know if you noticed that. 
This one was one over. See how these are all stacked yeah. like this? This one was over one sitting on that. So we have to remember that when we take this or put this back together. And they may all have that, but we'll just stack it like this and pull them all out. Stack it neatly like that. Side of there. Yeah, even one more. Holy smokes. They're in there. All right. Now you get the bottom. There you go. It's okay, you're on video. I know. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take this off video because we're gonna solve this immediately. All right, so here's our new clutch plates. And Mark is over there cleaning up the surfaces. So what you wanna do with new uh, clutch plates is you want to soak them in some oil before you put it in the bike, so. I always use the old ice cream bucket. There's some clean oil. There you go. And what I'm gonna do is I'll grab a screwdriver and pick these all apart to make sure oil gets on all sides of these. Let them soak for uh, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. Whatever, there's plenty of different uh, anecdotes online as to how long you want to soak them, but you want to at least get them soaked in oil for a while. All right, well, my buddy's over there struggling to get the remainder of this gasket off of here. We're guessing it's the original gasket. This bike's a 2002, so it's 17 years old. I'm going to show you a little hack on uh, how to make sure the next time you ever have to work on this, this gasket's going to come off easy. So you clean your gasket surfaces, and then what you do is you take your new gasket and you use some cooking spray. And you spray both sides of the gasket with the cooking spray. There you go. And then when we install this gasket, if we ever have to get under this clutch cover again, it's not gonna stick to either side of the case or the case cover. So hopefully we don't have to do another clutch, but if we do, this gasket's not gonna stick like this other one is. It's been, uh, it's been kicking his ass over here. All right, so before we put everything together, you want to inspect everything. Make sure that none of these, uh, these are called uh, fingers, and this is your clutch basket. You want to inspect all that to make sure there's nothing obviously damaged. Um, sometimes if you get a little bit ham-fisted taking shit apart, uh, you can break off these little um, legs off of here that, that bolts the pressure plate to the outside. If you look closely, you can see these marks on here. And there's some on the outer basket here as well. What will happen with those, that's uh, just the um, clutch uh, tabs wearing against this over time. And what will happen is that will create little grooves on there. It will make your clutch feel kind of stiff and uh, hard to shift into neutral at a stoplight. You having any issues like that with the bike? Yeah. So there's not much you can do you can try to very gently sand this you'd have to take the whole thing apart uh, but you don't want to take too much material off of there because then you're going to create slop in there the only real solution to it is to buy a new one so you pretty much end up just dealing with that so what we're going to do now is we're going to reassemble this and the reason that we stacked everything in the order it came off is now we can assemble it and what I'm going to do is dig one out of the, oh, thank you for the camera work. That. Dig one out of the oil here. It's been soaking for a little bit. And like I said, some people say to soak these overnight. Uh, I'm of the opinion that you don't have to soak them more than just really getting the oil on these because these things don't really soak up oil. 
because if they did, that would swell up and your clutch would not work. But that's just the common sense in me. And uh, if you've ever seen the populace of the United States, I don't think we have a lot of common sense in this country at times. <laughs> but there you go. So that is this one here. And now we are going to put the uh, metal disc in there. And now we're going to just alternate them. One friction disc and one metal. That's that one. Each motorcycle is a little bit different, but uh, you'll probably have seven or so of these. I didn't count them, but I guess we can when we're done. Seven to nine, something like that. This is a pretty high horsepower bike, so probably has quite a few. How fast does this bike go, Mark? 55? Yeah, I don't know what's the speed limit. 65. 65. I got it up to 60 once. Okay, just checking. <laughs> just checking. I didn't know for sure how fast it went. Yeah, when it when it slipped in sixth gear, it was at 52. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's on video. He's not gonna admit wrongdoing. <laughs> you know, neither one of us are geniuses, but we're not idiots either. last one remember it was offset there we go and that's it put this on and then we put our springs on so if this doesn't work we'll be making another video in a couple weeks about the uh, basket Basket. Well, we didn't replace the and the uh, springs. We didn't replace the metal uh, discs. We didn't replace the springs. So there you go. We got a lot more videos we could make. Yeah. I don't know. I would prefer that it just worked. Same here. But uh, when I did the uh, Suzuki DR350 for Justin, we we did a temporary fix, which I imagine is going to end up being a permanent fix. And we put. Uh, we put washers behind these springs here to add extra tension to them. Oh yeah, that's a good 200,000 miles. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how it's supposed to work. How, that's how the AOs in the world do it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Maybe we should get some washers now and call it good. Just, <laughs> Let's do it just now. Just do it now as a precaution. <laughs> exactly. Prerequisite. Yep. All right. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to snug these all down. I'm kind of going around getting a little bit at a time on each one. And as soon as they, as soon as they bottom out, I'm going to stop because these have a torque value. So we can look that up here and torque them. If you don't want to over tighten these because they're going into aluminum. So there you go. So this is a little unusual on this side cover. Usually they have little locator um, dowels on here so that this thing fits. This one doesn't have it, which makes it a little bit more of a pain to get this gasket on. But what we've done is we put a corner bolt and that should hold that on there. We're gonna put it on. And then just start each one of those. You want to hold it tight while you put more screws in there so the gasket won't slip. Yep, and then... Not the hard way. We'll just get all the bolts through, make sure they push through easily. But you can kind of see the gasket here, so I think we're going to be fine. And then we'll um, torque these down and we'll be done with the engine portion. All right, Master Mechanics at work finishing this thing up here. We got the clutch cover installed, just getting the fairing installed, and we gotta get some oil. We don't have oil here. But we're, we're pretty much wrapped up. A couple more bolts if we can get them in. He's having a little bit of heartache with it. But this is a nice bike. Came with this uh, GV wing rack. 
on the back and it has a top box here and these side cases and all this stuff comes off easy so it makes a really nice sport touring bike pretty comfortable smooth and fast awesome machine but i think that's going to wrap it up for our uh, cbr 1100 xx blackbird clutch install we're just going to assume that everything works because i mean i got my buddy working on it so it has to thank you very much for watching get out there and find your adventure adios